Welcome back to the GoGamecocks.com preview show. Big week here in South Carolina. Just slightly. <laughs> Clemson and South Carolina meet for the 111th time, only the sixth time both teams have been ranked. The first time both teams have been ranked in the top ten. And that's not the only thing going on Saturday. South Carolina will also be keeping, or at least South Carolina fans will be keeping their eye on Missouri and Texas A&M. Gamecocks kick off at 7 o'clock. Tigers and Aggies kick off at 7.45, and I would imagine you'll see highlights of that on the beast board during South Carolina's game. So, ought to be a pretty fun night in williams Bryce Stadium, if a cold night. South Carolina needs Texas A&M to beat Missouri. If that happens, the Gamecocks go to Atlanta for the SEC title game, regardless of what happens in williams Bryce Stadium on Saturday. But I think certainly most older, old-school South Carolina fans care a lot more about what happens against Clemson, and even the new-school Carolina fans care just as much, I, it seems to me. Five straight against the Tigers in a row would be unprecedented. What are your thoughts of this Clemson team as it pertains to the last four that haven't fared well against the Gamecocks? Well, I tell you, Josh, you're absolutely right there. There's a lot of USC fans out there that when they were growing up, this is the only game mm -hmm. of the year, you know, right. because they just weren't going to challenge for the SEC. So I think there's still a lot more in that, and it has bled down to the team these past few years. You start to see the Gamecocks have taken this game a lot more personally right. than they used to. But uh, I don't know if it'll be as easy as it has looked over the past four years. Obviously, Clemson still has that mega explosive offense led by Taj Boyd and Sammy Watkins and you know the list goes on and on. They've got a great running game even if they don't feature it right. that much led by uh, Roderick McDowell or Hot Rod as they call him. He had a real good game against USC last year. I think their defense is very much improved, specifically along the front four with Vic Beasley. He's having an All-American type year. They are still susceptible in the secondary to passes down the middle of the field, which I believe USC will try to exploit. But I don't know if it'll be as easy running the ball as USC has right. had in the past four years with that front four. I think that one thing that, South, that Clemson has learned from South Carolina and from seeing the SEC dominance is that they needed to man up, for lack of a better word, on the lines of scrimmage. And I think they feel like they're doing that currently on the defensive line. They don't have a Daquan Bowers, but Vic Beasley is having a great year. And I think man for man on the D-line, and even in their two deep, they feel good about the guys that they've got and their toughness and their ability to stand strong. I'm not sure they yet feel that way about their offensive line. And this game, as it always does, I think will come down to those lines of scrimmage, as sure. you mentioned. Clemson's defensive line is better. South Carolina will have to move the ball. We'll get to sort of the South Carolina keys later. Clemson will have to block Jadavian Clowney, Kelsey Quarles, et cetera. And I think even in the Tigers' mind right now, that's a little bit of a question mark. For you, what do the Gamecocks have to do offensively and defensively to make it five in a row? Josh, I think this is real simple. They need to go back to what's won this game the past four years. No matter if Clemson gets ahead, which they have for right. three of the past four years right. and scored the first time, Steve Spurrier and company can't get panicky and try to even up that score right away by throwing for a quick strike touchdown. What they need to do? run the ball on offense, and get pressure on Taj Boyd on defense. Now, running the ball, they've got a great chance to do it. Mike Davis is healthy. Brandon Wilds is healthy. Right. Sean Carson and Jamari Smith have really shown their chops. And on top of that, you got Connor Shaw and Pharaoh Cooper who can run out of the Wildcat formation. They can run the ball, which grinds clock and keeps Taj Boyd off the field. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, he can't stay off the field forever. So when he's on there, they've got to make him feel the heat. Corner blitz him from the start, knock him down and make him feel it. And then, as uh, you know, we're actually been talking about all year, how many almost sacks does South Carolina have this year? clowney has got a half dozen by himself. Yeah, if they run into the backfield, they've got the quarterback dead rights, and they just slip past him. You know, mm -hmm. they can't do that this time, especially because Boyd is a quick strike fire guy. Yeah. He likes to throw that quick out, and he likes to roll out to the sides and hit his tight ends in motion. They have got to get pressure on Boyd, and they've got to knock him down. You take him out and Sammy Watkins is, you know, not a factor. Right. So as long as they do those two things, they got a great shot to win this game. I agree. I think it comes down to what you mentioned, South Carolina offensively and specifically first downs. Just make a lot of first downs. It's the recipe that's won this game the last four years. They've had more first downs than Clemson each of those years. They've dominated the time of possession. They've dominated the football. South Carolina has not since the Tennessee game, done a great job of converting first downs until the blowout last week of Coastal Carolina. And you may say 70 to 10 against Coastal Carolina, big whoop. But I think it gave the offense some confidence. I think that Connor Shaw specifically looked healthier, said he was healthier. 
33 times this year, Connor has run for a first down. 28 of those came prior to that knee sprain. Clearly, it was hurting him. But he's coming back. He's getting back into form, I think. Two years ago, he played these guys. By himself, he ran for six first downs. Just If you're South Carolina, just move the chains, move the chains, move the chains. And you mentioned health of running backs. I think South Carolina, across the board, is very healthy. I mean, they got to be loving. Maybe, maybe Bryson Williams is a question mark going into the game. Yeah, but they, they said that he'll probably be able to play. Right. So that's, I mean, they've only got three guys that are out, and Mike Matulas, who was one of them, you knew he was going to be out the sure. whole year. Yeah. And the second one is Jordan Diaz, who's a backup fullback. And then the third is a Devin Washington, who was going to redshirt this year anyway. They've been extremely fortunate with injuries. So, you know, if you're having your Thanksgiving meal and giving thanks for stuff, if you're a Gamecock, you know, be thankful you're not the rest of the SEC East that's been <laughs> decimated by injuries. I'm going to put you on the spot this week. Predictions, five in a row, yes or no? It's tough, Josh. You know, growing up, uh, watching this rivalry right. from afar and, and seeing what's going on, there's just a lot of factors to consider. First factor, nobody wins five straight in this rivalry. Yeah. They haven't uh, since the 30s and 40s. True. And, uh, you know, that was Clemson when they won seven in a row. And since then, there's been a lot of four-game streaks, but not a five. But then again, Taj Boyd has not shown a great chops of beating this team. Connor Shaw is at home where he doesn't lose at home. I just look at it, and I think that this is kind of like the baseball series recently. This is not a game that USC expects to lose anymore. In fact, they know that barring a miracle, they should win. I can't go against that, so I'm going to pick South Carolina 28, Clemson 20. I go back to my time covering Georgia. I spent a lot of years doing that and watching them get beat over and over and over and over by Florida, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of you know what they thought the matchups were for them. That gets in your head. You just can't tell me it doesn't. And I got to the point with that Georgia team where regardless, you know, of what happened on a yearly basis, I said, I pick for you know, I don't care what the matchups say, I'm picking Florida until Georgia proves they can win this game. I'm at that point with Clemson now. Clemson's just got to go prove it. Clemson's got a great offense. Clemson's got an improving defense. A lot of good matchups out there for Clemson Saturday. They got to go prove it. Until they do, I'm not going to pick them. I'm with you. I've got South Carolina. I say something along the lines of 30 to 28. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a great night at williams Bryce Stadium. Should, Exciting night. Should be a lot of excitement, and we'll be there to chronicle all of it for you. Happy Thanksgiving. Coat.